Hi, this is Herb Schubert with the Dr. X channel. And if you normally come to this channel to learn about 3D printing, you're going to learn something new today. And even if you don't plan on doing this yourself, it's going to be very interesting to you to watch the process of creating beautiful wood pens or plastic pens or specialty pens, all with a simple device called a lathe. Now, if you remember lathes from shop class or other settings, you think of these big things used to make baseball bats. This is a $150 lathe you can buy from Penn State Industries. And I'm going to walk you through all of the steps of making a beautiful pen like this in a couple hours or less. So stay tuned and let's learn something together. Let's begin with a brief inventory of the things I have here. Now, if you choose to get started with this hobby, Penn State Industries offers a combination kit for about $300 that includes a lathe, that's the device for turning. It includes, and these are not actually the chisels that it includes, but it includes chisels. Those are the devices you use for carving the pen. It includes some wood blanks already pre-drilled and ready, ready to be cut down to size. It includes sandpaper, finishing tools, everything you need to get started. So if you wanted to try this out for about 300 bucks, which is about what it seems to cost me to take my grandchildren to a baseball game nowadays, for about 300 bucks, you can get started making beautiful pens. Let's walk through all the individual components. The power end of making a pen is called a lathe. This is a relatively small lathe because you can only turn things with a diameter of up to about five inches. In fact, I found three inches is really the limit. So what can you make with a lathe that can handle a three inch turning diameter? Well, you can make pens, you can make wine bottle stoppers, you can make doorknobs, you can make handles for various tools and accessories. So it's really quite versatile as a hobbyist tool. Now a lathe consists of a motor that spins a product this motor is a variable speed motor, which makes it much easier to use. It consists of a tailstock that holds the wood you're turning. We'll see how we do that. In this case, it includes a mandrel. That's a rod that goes through the middle of the pen while you're turning it. Now, in addition to the lathe, you will need a set of chisels. Your first set of chisels will probably be carbide tools. That's because the actual cutting part of the chisel here on the end is easily replaceable. In addition, if you look, it's easier to see with this square one, there are four cutting surfaces. So you can use this chisel for quite a long time for quite a number of pens by just loosening it and rotating the chisel component. You'll need some sandpaper. Once you have the shape of your pen correct to smooth it down, You'll need some products to finish the pen. I like these two products a lot. This is called Ultra Shine. You do this, use this after sanding to get it even smoother. It's a it's called a sanding paste. And then for the final finish, I like using the Mylan's High Build Friction Polish. What is a friction polish? Well, when you're turning your pen on the lathe, you apply the friction polish and then use a paper towel or a very small piece of cloth. You don't never want to bring anything long and dangly near a turning lathe in order to apply friction. That means you press it down so it starts to get hot and that will finalize the fish finish and create a beautiful, beautiful finish. So these are the general components. Now, in addition, you need the consumable components. What are the consumable components? Well, with you start with a blank. It could be wood, like this blank here. It could be plastic or acrylic, like this blank here. Or it could be a 
stabilized burl material. Now, what is a burl material? Well, if you walk up to a tree, you'll see they're knots in the side. Well, when they're knots in the side, the grain of the wood is very interesting. This is a burl pen made from a burl stabilized blank. And because the knot on the tree, the wood is not as uniform, they take and they add a resin to this wood to stabilize it. They do that under pressure to stabilize this wood. So you need a blank. The next thing you need is a pen kit. Now a pen kit basically includes all of the metal parts you need to make a pen. Well, let's look at those parts together. Obviously you need the pen cartridge. Pen cartridges have a spring you put on the end. This is slips over the end in order to allow you to either press the pen in or turn the pen in. So when you look at a pen that's in, being used, when you press the end in and you press again, it comes back. It's the spring that's popping it back. When you turn your pen and you turn it back, it's the spring that's turning that back. The next component you'll see are two, one or two. In this case, there's one. In this case, there are two. One or two brass tubes. What you'll end up doing is taking your wood blank and cutting it to approximately the length of a brass tube. Then you'll insert the brass tube inside and you'll glue it in place with super glue, with CA glue. But this isn't the super glue that you get at the five and 10 store at your pharmacy. This is super glue that's made for woodworkers and it's a bit more concentrated. It has certain additives that make it stronger in the ways that you need for this particular type of application. So you'll super glue these blanks into place and then you're going to put them on the lathe. Let's wait for a minute to talk about that. Once you've taken the components of your pen and you've turned them down to the proper shapes, you're going to press these metal parts into the end. That action, that process of pressing them will be done with a pen press. So you will mount your wooden components with the metal tubes inside, inside a pen press. And then this is used to press them together because these additional metal components, and let's look at them now, these metal components press into the brass tube. You can see the brass tube here and the metal component. And the brass tube is glued into the block of wood. You've turned to shape on your lathe. So that's how all of these components come together to make a pen. Now, in addition to the component for the tip, there, is, there are also components for the middle of the pen and for the clip and the tail of the pen. So all of these components come in a little kit all together. You'll see this here, along with a ink cartridge. Now, how do you make this pen round? Because these are rectangular. Well, that's where the lathe comes into play. So you have a component called a mandrel. A mandrel is this tube. And you're going to take and put brass tubes into your wood components. And then you want to mount those on the mandrel. Well, how do you mount those? You use bushings. Now, bushings are each a special size for the style of pen you're making because they allow you to get your wood, to carve your wood down to just the right dimension for the components you're going to apply. So in the case of a pen like this, you have three bushings, a bushing for the middle, a bushing for each end. Let's show you how you use bushings. So we're going to take, and we're gonna put a spacer here on the end of our mandrel, and then we're gonna put the bushing for the tail or the top of the pen onto the mandrel. 
then we will slide our wood on and you'll see the brass tube goes over the end of the bushing. Then we'll put in our bushing for the middle of the pen. We'll slide our tube on and we'll slide the bushing for the tip of the pen. That whole set of components will be mounted in your lathe. When your lathe is turned, the wood will turn and you'll have these bushings in between the components. You use a carving tool to carve down to that dimension. Now that we've learned about the overview, let's return to the shop. We'll do a little bit of carving together on this particular set of blanks. I'll take and I'll finish the set of blanks, then we'll return here and we'll actually assemble it all together. Okay, we're in the Dr. Vax woodworking shop, which is a room that's nine by 12, filled to the ceiling, which is not very high because I can touch it, with a variety of tools. What we're looking at right here are two tools that we're going to use in addition to the lathe for making our pen. The pen we're going to make today is an apprentice cigar pen. It's a little larger cylinder, larger size than the pens I showed you earlier in the video. The first thing we have to do is we have to cut the blank to the right size for the brass tubes. Then we have to drill a hole in the blank, glue the brass tubes into the blank, and then sand down or finish the blank with the blast tubes, so the tubes come to the very top of the blank. So I'm going to reposition the camera a couple times so that you can see this more closely. What you see here is a pen blank. This is Red Heart. Red Heart is a very nice wood to work with on a lathe because it's very, very easy to shape, and yet the grain is nice and fine, so it's a tight grain. So it takes stain, it takes a finish very nicely. We have two tubes here. The long tube is for the, the top part of the pen, and the short tube is for the bottom part. They are different sizes, so we'll have to cut them differently. So we're going to take and mark these tubes off on the pen here. And we want to mark a space that's about a quarter of an inch longer than the actual tube size. Now I'm going to take and um, slice these to these individual sizes. Now the piece of wood that was attached to my miter gauge here is just to give me a little more stability when I'm cutting items that are relatively short. Make sure we know where our hands are. And slice this just so it touches the back. And now we are ready to take and drill holes in this blank. But I want to point out one additional thing. If we look closely, we can see the grain aligns here. It's a good idea to put a mark on your blanks, just like I'm doing here, so that you can align those blanks in the same way later on. So when you put your pen together, the grain will align. Okay, let's reposition the camera to the drill press, and we'll drill out these blanks. Before we drill these blanks, we need to find the center. Well, we could use a fancy tool, but if we remember a little bit of high school geometry, if we just bisect a rectangle, the two lines will cross at the center. Okay, now that we have both of these blanks marked, it's time to do the drilling. And to do that, we're going to use a special clamp that has two notches. So I'm going to put the blank into this clamp and tighten it in. And you'll see here that these two notches hold it centered. Now I'm going to position the clamp and raise up the table just a little bit below the drill bit. Make sure it's tight. Make sure the drill bit is centered right in the center there. Then I'm going to hold this down from the side, 
turn on my drill and begin to drill with an up and down motion. Loosen the bed again, push it up so that the bit is inside. Now this time I'm actually going to rotate this around this way because you noticed last time the vise was not staying perfectly still. So I want to be able to hold it a little bit tighter. And we'll continue to drill down here. And let's take a look. And we'll see here we have a nice blank, um, but it's clearly off center a bit. That's not going to matter though, because we have plenty of wood around here for when we carve this. So I'm going to take and drill the other blank offline. And then we will come back and glue in the tubes. Okay, here are the supplies that we'll need to glue these tubes into place. The first is we have some sandpaper. And the reason is we're going to rough up these tubes a little bit. And the reason we want to rough them up a little bit, in particular I want scores going this way, is because those rough or score lines will take and hold the glue better than this smooth tube. So we're going to rough these up a little bit. Okay, now we don't need the sandpaper any longer. Now you'll notice I'm wearing a glove on one hand, and that is because I uh, really don't want to get this glue on my fingers. I'm going to bring one other tool over, that's just an X-Acto knife. So I'm going to take a tube, let's first match up the tubes, the long tube and the short tube. I'm going to take a tube and put it on this little tube holder. You don't need one of these, you could use the gloved hand and that would work fine. And then I'm going to apply a fairly liberal amount of glue. When I first started doing this, I was concerned about having too much glue. Um, I think that was a mistake. And I had a number of cases where the tubes actually came out. Then we will insert the tube into the hole, rotating it a little bit. And then I take the X-Acto knife and I hold it against the top and tap the tube down a little bit to make sure it is fully into the tube and then set it down to dry. Let's do that for the second one. Put a little bit of glue on here. Let's take and close this up. Let's get this inserted into the tube. Let's take and pull our guide device out. And now we're going to let that dry for five or ten minutes. Okay, we're set up here at my larger lathe. This is a 10 inch lathe. That means it can uh, work on a bowl that's up to 10 inches in diameter. And I am wearing a mask, or I will be during some of this, in addition to safety goggles, in order to keep the dust out of my lungs. So it may be a little bit harder to hear me from time to time. Now, one thing you'll notice is that I've taken and rounded off the corners. I did that with a power sander. You could do that with just sandpaper, or you could skip that altogether. It just makes it a little easier to get started because the corners won't catch your chisel as easily when you're initially creating a round shape. So let's get started rounding this off until the ends of the pen blanks are the diameters of the bushings for each of the components. Now you can choose to have a straight transition. You can choose to have it fatter in the middle. That's a point of personal preference. When using a carbide chisel, you go straight into the work plate piece and you take slow cuts initially. So I'm holding this chisel straight and I'm just taking small cuts. Now, because I'm using the round chisel, I'm getting these sort of grooves, and that's just fine. We will clean those up later. The initial goal, and now I'm going to go horizontally across here, the initial goal is just to make this round. And you can see how easy this is to do. we'll see that this is now relatively round. And so I'm going to switch to a square tool. This will let me get a, a smoother finish on this. I would go back to the round tool if I wanted to do any type of special detailing, round an edge, um, carve out a bowl, or make a bead or a cove. 
In this case, we're going to have a nice straight transition from this size to this size, this size to this size. So I'm going to use this square tool to do that. Okay, we want to check that these transition points are nice. We'll get them a little bit closer with sanding. And now we're ready to move to the next stage, which is to sand this. So I'm going to take and move this out of the way. Going to remove this. And move this off to the side so it's out of the way. And now we're going to start sanding. So let's turn the lathe on, but I'm going to have it at a relatively slow speed now. And I'll just take and sand across here. And then I'm going to turn the lathe off and do some horizontal sanding. And the reason is while the lathe was turning, any sand marks from the sandpaper are going to be circular. So by horizontally sanding, I'll remove those and instead any sand marks will be with the grain. Well, sand marks with the grain are harder to see because the grain is running in that direction already. Okay, and now I'm going to go through the individual grits uh, one at a time to get this very smooth. Now I'm going to do a little of work with Ultra Shine, which is a sanding polish, a polish wax, or some people call it a sanding wax, and that will further smooth out the piece and begin to finish it. So to do this, we just use a paper towel and first manually rub some of this polish onto the piece. I have more than I need here. And you'll see it darkens it and begins to bring out this beautiful grain. Now we'll turn the lathe on and allow the speed to even it out. And then we're going to turn it up a little higher and treat this like a friction polish. So allow it to get a little bit hot, which will melt the wax and help it penetrate the fibers of the wood. We'll move to a clean spot and actually polish it a little bit. Okay, that actually looks beautiful in and of itself. Now we're going to finish it up with some Mylan's high build friction polish, which will really shine it up nice and bright. And we basically will use the same technique. We'll put a little bit of friction polish on. First, let it soak in a little bit. Then we'll turn it up and start to polish it. And now you're going to see the highlights of this wood really come out. I've taken the two wooden barrels off of the mandrel and I've laid them out on the table here in the order they're going to be assembled with the metal parts. So we have the tip is going to be pressed in here. We have a coupler that's going to be pressed in here. That coupler is going to screw into the transmission. The transmission is going to go into the top end and then we have the clip here. We also have an ink cart this is a Parker style cartridge and we have our spring. So let's start assembling this together. The key is, um, in general, I find that you want to put the wood pieces or pieces that could get scuffed against this plastic piece here. So we're going to assemble this piece first and you have to make sure they go in straight because if they go in on an angle, you may potentially crack your blank. So we're going to straighten that out there and see if we can get this to go in straight. There we go. And you just use enough force to get it to go in and you'll see that that fits perfectly because we took and we carved the wood 
we turned the wood down to the right dimension on the mandrel. Okay, so that piece is completed. Now we need to push the coupler in. So that piece we can do here. We'll take this out, give us a little more room. That looks pretty good there. So we have those pieces assembled together. Now we can screw the transmission in, just like this, except we first have to put in our ink cartridge. So our ink cartridge comes out here, then we screw in the transmission. And you can see now that you can turn it and it will open and it will close. So that's working properly. The ink cartridge has come with a little piece of plastic on the end of the... And this is a very nice transmission because it goes in both directions. Now we're going to take and put the top on here. We'll put the spacer back in. We'll see if we can get this to fit in. And we need a little more leverage there, so I'm going to take an extra blank and just put it in there. The last piece we have to put in is the trim cap, and that's going to allow this to all fit together nicely. So we're going to gently insert that in, and now we can press our pen together, and we have a beautiful pen that um, I don't know for sure, but would probably sell for $20, $30, $50 on a site like Etsy, maybe more. Um, we can actually screw this a little tighter. So folks, I hope you enjoyed learning about making pens. Um, it is a wonderful, wonderful hobby using the same technology that I use for making this pen uh, and using the smaller lathes. You can also make other di items like handles for carving knives, handles, decorative handles for spoons. You can make wine stoppers and a variety of items. If you upgrade to a larger lathe, like the lathe I was turning this particular pen on, then you can go even further and make bowls and a variety of other items. So thanks for watching. If you found this interesting, give me a thumbs up, recommend the channel to everyone you know, and let's continue to learn things together.